Hello. Today we're going to look at explaining trends, the reactivity of groups 1 and 7. Really, what we're thinking about with this is explaining the trends in reactivity of groups 1 and 7. How will electronic structure help? So pause the video, make sure that you've got a title and a date in your books, and then we'll continue. Okay, the reactivity of the alkali metals. Just to remind you, all alkali metals react with water to form a metal hydroxide and hydrogen. We covered that when we looked at the alkali metals recently. In terms of a general equation then, that is to say that the, an alkali metal will react with water to form an alkali metal hydroxide and hydrogen. This is always the case. For example, if you take cesium and react it with water, you form cesium hydroxide and hydrogen. What I'd like you to do is to pause the video and write out the general equation because the general equation will help you with what we're going to do next. So that is alkali metal plus water makes alkali metal hydroxide plus hydrogen. Right, I'd like you to have a go guys at balancing the following equations. I've done the first one for you, which is two atoms of lithium react with two water molecules to form two lithium hydroxide molecules and a hydrogen molecule. I've put blanks, little sort of lines if you like, spaces for you to put some numbers next to each alkali metal and each water, but you will also need to tell me what is the product formed in each case. But basically you need to make the four equations on the screen look like the one which has been done for you. Once you've done that, you can have a go at telling me which is the most reactive alkali metal and why. We have covered it before, so it might be worth, if you're unsure, flicking back through your notes to, let, to get you to help you if you're really struggling. So have a go at this, guys. I think this will take you about five minutes, and then we'll go over the answers in just a moment. Okay, here are the answers. You need to have two alkali metal atoms reacting with two water molecules to form two hydroxide uh, molecules and one hydrogen molecule. This is the same in every single case. Of those listed, cesium at the bottom here would be the most reactive alkali metal. That's because it's at the bottom of group one, so the outer electron is furthest away from the nucleus. That means that outer electron is more easily lost and you'll remember that the goal of all atoms is to get a full outer shell to become stable. If it gets a full outer shell, it's stable. So all the alkali metals being in group one want to lose their outer electron. In terms of the reactivity of the halogens, I'd like you to have a go at the equations on screen. We did do this last lesson, guys, so again, you can use your notes to help you if you're really struggling. The first one I've done for you, which is chlorine reacting with two molecules of potassium bromide to form two molecules of potassium chloride and bromine. It's a displacement reaction. The most reactive halogen will displace the least reactive halogen in the compound, kicking it out, forming uh, a molecule of that type. Once you've had a go at those equations, guys, again, making yours like mine, you can tell me which is the most reactive halogen and why. Again, we covered this last lesson. This is a bit of a recap to help you with what's coming next. So pause the video and we'll go through the answers in just a moment. So the first one before I did for you, which is one chlorine molecule reacts with two potassium bromides to form two potassium chlorides and one bromine. 
This is exactly the case in the next two examples. Chlorine reacts with two potassium iodides to form two potassium chlorides and an iodine. And bromine reacts with two potassium iodides to make two potassium bromides and an iodine. A more reactive halogen, so chlorine is more reactive than bromine, will displace it. This is an example of a displacement reaction in its salt to form uh, a new salt and the less reactive molecule. Fluorine being at the top of group 7 is the most reactive halogen. Its outer shell is closest to the nucleus, so the attraction will be high, meaning that it can gain electrons easily. What this means, and this is probably the most important slide that I'm going to show you today, there are three factors that affect the reactivity of either the group 7 or group 1. The first factor is how far away the electron shell is from the nucleus. The second factor is how thereby what's the attraction of the outer electrons to that nucleus. Spoiler alert, the further away it is, the less, attractive it, uh, less attraction there is to the nucleus. The closer it is, the more attraction that it will experience to the nucleus. And then the third thing is how easily that electron is going to be lost or gained. If it's further away, it's easier to lose. If it's closer, that means it's easier to gain an electron. And just to remind you that group one want to lose one electron to become stable, whereas group seven gain one electron to become stable. Please pause the video and write that down into your notes. This is, as I say, probably the most important slide that we have looked at so far today. Next little task then, I've got group one here on the left hand side and group seven here on the right hand side. We've seen for group one that the reactivity increases down the group, whereas for group seven, the reactivity increases up the group. You could either think about for group seven, the reactivity increasing up the group, or you could say that the reactivity decreases down the group. They really mean precisely the same thing. There are three sentence starters for each group. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video in a moment. I'd like you to write endings to these sentence starters and then we'll go over it. I think that this probably should take you about six minutes in total. So please pause the video and uh, copy this out and write uh, endings to the sentences which are on the screen. OK, so hopefully what you've written down for group one is that obviously I wrote that the reactivity increases down the group. That's because the outer electrons getting further away from the nucleus. That means the attraction is lower to the nucleus. So as a result, the outer electron is easier to lose. Conversely, for group seven, the outer electrons getting closer to the nucleus. So that means the attraction is higher. So it's easier to gain an electron. Fluorine can gain electrons easily because it's small. And as such, it's going to uh, it, the attraction to the nucleus will be high because its outer shell is close to the nucleus. So as a result, it's going the attraction is going to be high. It's going to be easier to gain an electron. So fluorine is the most reactive halogen. Francium, or in practice cesium, really, because francium is radioactive and there are only a few atoms of it. But cesium, there's a lot more of cesium in the the universe than francium. Anyway, at the bottom of group seven, the outer electron is further away from the nucleus. It's more easily lost because the attraction is lower. Please pause the video and update your notes with explanations and finishing the sentence starters. OK, as a little plenary to summarise what we've learned today, what I'd like you to do is to use the Caboodle textbook if you're in my class at the moment, you will have a printout of this. Otherwise, you can access it 
through caboodle.com if you're learning from home. I'd like you to copy out the electronic structure diagrams at the top of page 31 and then I'd like you to answer the questions at the bottom of page 31. Please use all your notes uh, from today and indeed the textbook to help you. The cover teacher has the answers which they'll use to go through at the end of the lesson. Thank you for your attention guys. Any problems please contact me through Teams. Thank you.